As artists and creatives, we want people to experience our creations exactly as we intended. Whether it's showing your film at a theater with the perfect score and dialogue audio mix, or displaying your photos at a gallery with perfect color rendition and exposure. We have to ensure our vision remains from beginning to end, Neo. Hi, my name is Jorge, welcome. In this channel, we merge creativity and productivity to try to live a more fulfilling life. In one of my previous videos, we talked about the importance of printing your own photos and your photo books. So I figured today we go through the process of understanding color accuracy and calibrating your own screen. As always, every section of the video will be timestamped below, so let's just get to it. Not every monitor or laptop display is made the same. Some have a different range in brightness in contrast, some have a shorter or longer lifespan, and some even have a wider color gamut. Issues like photos that look great on your computer when you print them look terrible, exposure is off and colors are off, or videos that you exported on your laptop look different on a TV are caused really by the disparity between the color profiles and the ranges between devices. The longer you have used a display, the less accurate it becomes. So that's why it's normally recommended to do it fairly often, about once a month or every four weeks, to keep all your profiles and your colors always the same. When you calibrate your display, you get your films or your photos as close as possible to the delivery standards of film, photography, and print work. And that's why calibrating your screen is one of the most important things you can do if you don't have the budget to get a proper high-end calibrated display for grading films and photos. If you don't have the budget to get a professional high-end color grading or photo editing monitor, then the next bet would be getting a calibration tool like this to calibrate your screen. Now, calibration tools are not necessarily cheap, but is an investment in your craft. Consider this. Maybe you have photos of your family or your pets or your kids. So you go to Costco, you go to Walmart and you print them. Very affordable, very low quality. Once you see them, you actually realize that none of the colors matches and the exposure is way off as well. So maybe you go home, you try to correct it digitally and you do it again. And pretty much the same thing happens. Maybe by the third try, you corrected it quite a bit to the point where you're just happy, you just leave it as is. Not only you wasted time, but you wasted money through the whole process. Something you can easily correct by either having a properly calibrated display, a professional high-end monitor, or just getting a calibration tool. The issue is very simple. A disconnect between what you're seeing on your display and what the actual colors are. So if we go by that example of just printing family photos and pet photos, then maybe a calibration tool or a professional display is not the thing that you need. But if you're serious about photography, you want to print your own photos for galleries or photo prints, or even just enlargements as well, then calibrating your screen is a must and it's something you have to do early on so you don't waste time and money. You can get a high-end calibrated display. These cost about $1,000 or so, and they come factory calibrated. Or if you have something like a MacBook Pro, you can get a calibration tool. The one I'm using today is an X-Rite i1 Display Pro. When you pick one of these, it will come with the actual booklet or manual. It will come with drivers as well, and it will come with the calibration tool. I don't recommend you use this, even if you do have a CD drive for some reason. Please go to the website and download the latest drivers. That's the best thing you can do. In my photo book video, I used the Datacolor Spider X Pro, and I noticed that the exposure wasn't quite right. The colors were great, but the exposure wasn't quite right. And it's because the entry-level software for both the X-Rite and the Datacolor are very limited in terms of the options. I would suggest some of the medium to high-end calibration tools because they give you more control in the process of calibrating your display. I have already installed the drivers and the software, so all I need right now is my computer, the calibration tool, we're gonna jump to my MacBook and I'm gonna show you a step-by-step -step guide and the process of calibrating your display. So let's go. All right, so we're here in my MacBook Pro. The first thing I have to do is go to my display settings and disable true tone, disable automatically adjust brightness. And we go to the night shift tab and we also schedule it to off. We don't want our display to change color temperatures, to change brightness on its own. We all want it to be manual. We want to have full control. Also in here later, we can change the brightness. The software will ask us to change the brightness so we can do it with this window right here instead of the touch bar. But the touch bar is a little bit easier if you want to do it that way. 
So now we can open our display profiler. All right, so this is the i1 profiler uh, software that comes with the calibration tool. First thing we wanna make sure is that it recognizes our actual tool and it's right here. And if you're unsure of which one you have, it will actually give you a display icon of what it looks like. For me, I'm using the Display Pro, so it's this one right here. The other thing I wanna do is I wanna go into the advanced settings. I don't want any basic stuff. I wanna have full control of my calibration experience. After that, we go to the top left and profiling. And in here, it's gonna automatically recognize what display I'm using. In this case, it's the MacBook Pro display. So I'm gonna click that just in case. Also, the white point profile, I wanna leave it at D65. The luminance, I wanna leave it at 100. So the suggested range is between 80 to 120. I find that 100 is the best uh, number for me. CDM square means candela per square meter, and a candela is the same as one nit. So a display like this, for example, can go up to 500 nits. That means 500 candela. So in here, I wanna select it at 100 and leave it at that. That is the best level for actual prints. Remember, we're doing this to print our own photos and photo books. Everything else in this section, I'm gonna leave it at default. It does a good job in recognizing the color contrast and the gamut. But the thing that I wanna do is I wanna turn ambient light smart control off. I don't want the software to change the brightness of the display depending on the situation. I'm gonna hit next. I'm gonna leave this one here in default. The software knows what it's doing. Hit next. And the patch set. I wanna change this to large. And when you do that, it will give you 461 color swatches that it will go through the process of reading all of those on screen Make it a little longer, about seven to 10 minutes, depending on your computer, but it's a bit more accurate in my opinion. So we're gonna choose the large one. And we're gonna hit next. You want to turn automatic display control off. Again, we don't want the software changing that on its own, but we want to change it manually. So we're gonna leave this on and the actual software will request to bring the brightness up or down, depending on our levels, when we start measuring. So when we hit start measuring, it will give you this display and you can open the calibration tool in this fashion and put it in front of your screen. Tilt your display back a little bit so it is flat on the surface and it's not uneven. Hit OK. And then you hit Next. Right now it's gonna do a quick assessment and it will ask us to change exposure if needed. All right. So you can tell that my target is 100 candela, but my screen at the moment is 125. I can either use my touch bar to change the brightness, but it is not in accurate increments. I can go way over or way under, so 98 or 135. There's no in between here. So what I'd suggest is to open your display settings again, get it away from the calibration tool, and in here you can actually carefully drag until you get as close as possible. 102, 101, so close. All right, after playing with this annoying brightness bar right here, I was able to get it exactly at 100. So again, my target is 100 and my measure luminance at the moment is 100. Please make sure this little window is away from the calibration tool, it's not in the center because it will obviously affect your exposure readings. You can close this now and as you can tell, we're 100 over 100 and we'll hit next. So right now we'll go through the process of reading the 461 color patches. It can take seven to 10 minutes. We'll speed this up a little bit and we'll get back to you when it's done. All right, now we'll go into the verification process. It takes only a couple seconds and the calibration is done. When the calibration process is complete, it will show you this message to remove the calibration tool from the screen and put it aside. Put the cover on and it will show you this. And then you can hit next. Measurements have been completed, yeah. All right, these were our settings, 461 color patches measured, hit next. And here you can just rename the file and save it. I recommend you leave the date so you know when to do it. Again, 
The profile reminder, um, four weeks is a good time, so once a month again. Once you rename it and complete the process, you're gonna hit save profile and our calibration is complete. If we go to this little profile right here, we can see it before and after of what the calibration looked like and we are done. And that is how you calibrate your display using the i1 Display Pro calibration tool from X-Rite. That's it. Today we talked about the importance of calibrating your display, what do you need to calibrate your display, and we went through the process step by step. By now, I hope you understand the importance of doing that. The point of calibrating your display is that whatever you see on your digital computer and your files, it's exactly what you'll get on the print form. So because of that, calibration is something I recommend to everybody that is taking photography seriously or filmmaking seriously as well. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe. There's a lot more videos coming, a lot more ideas that I'd like to explore together. Thank you very much for giving me your time and your energy and good luck with your creative process.